in my what seems like endless pursuit of being a jack of all trades and a master of none, I have decided yet again to start a project and an entirely new craft that I have zero experience in. But that's how you get started, isn't it? So today we are going to attempt a quilt. Now, you might think, Kat, how have you never done a quilt? That seems like something everyone who sews does, but it's not. And it's actually a really interesting craft that has very specific skill set that I don't, I don't possess, namely accurate sewing. <laughs> However, I really wanted to try it. And that is because, well, we're getting into winter and the weather's getting colder. Um, and I really wanted like sort of a, not what I would call a soft project, but like a project where I don't need to be constantly worried about something fitting me, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so I thought a quilt would work perfectly. And I recently went to the V&A, so the Victorian and Albert Museum in London, and I've bought something that is what inspired this project. But first I thought we could talk a little bit about quilting, because even though it was something I knew about mainly from the garment side of it, so quilted garments like jumps, like coats, like very popular in the 18th century, uh, petticoats, all that sort of stuff. I didn't know much about quilts as in like the domestic making of quilts. So I jumped into the deep end and by that I mean archive.org <laughs> and I had a little bit of a look around and I thought I'd share a bit of what I found. Before we tread into the history a little bit, a quick word about today's sponsors, Serious Readers, the makers of Serious Lights. These are high-tech, very impressive lamps to support all of your hobbies, from reading to sewing. I usually dread the winter because it makes sewing so much harder with the short daylight hours and the fading light. But I have here my very own serious light from the high definition range, which is if you've watched any video on this channel in the past 12 months, it has featured it. And I no longer have to try and cram all of my sewing into two hours before 3 p.m. Sirius Lights uses daylight wavelength technology, which replicates the daylight spectrum as closely as technically possible, which makes sewing in the shortest days of the year a piece of cake. All Sirius Lights are built in the UK and come with a five-year warranty. And as you can see, I've had mine for nearly a year with no issues. They are currently running a great offer where you can use the code SR494 for £100 off a high-definition light, plus free delivery. You can follow the link in the description below to check them out. Now, back to History Cat. Quilting is a centuries-old worldwide practice, with many applications from clothing to art pieces as forms of self-expression to household practical items. It is the latter that we will be making today, particularly for bedding. Quilting in itself is the method of stitching layers of fabric or other materials together, often with an inner layer of wadding. The lines of stitching often form a pattern or a design, and the addition of wadding as a layer ensures the final product will provide extra warmth. Quilting has a long history of being women's domestic work, either for practical applications or to mark celebrations or achievements in their life. There is also patchwork, which is technically different to quilting, which I didn't know. Patchwork is where fabric fragments are sewn together or pieced to create a design. In Britain, the most popular patchwork method was called piecing over paper, where the pattern is accurately cut from paper, then use that to cut the fabric. The fabric is then tacked over the paper shape and each shape is sewn together to form the design. Patchwork has long been associated with household economy as an efficient means of using up smaller scraps of fabric. That is not to say that quilting and patchwork was exclusively a domestic work of the working classes. Indeed, there were plenty of quilts made of more expensive materials for decorative functions and quilting designs were often included in magazines, aimed at the wealthy and the middle class, such as Godet's Lady's Book. The inspiration for this patchwork quilt is the 19th century, as the fabric I'll be using is from Morris Designs. More about that in a second. There are exquisite examples of crafty and mind-blowing Victorian quilts. There was also a temporary Victorian craze called crazy quilting. <laughs> These quilts were characterized by their asymmetry and the apparent lack of structured traditional design. I say apparent because most likely these designs were still carefully planned. They just looked haphazard. Although this also seems like a lot of fun and something I may yet do in the future as I have a surprisingly large amount of cabbage. Today I'll be attempting a simple quilt. That is mostly because this is my first attempt, but also because my fabric has already been neatly prepared for a very simple square patchwork quilt. That's because today I will be using this. <laughs> 
I bought this little bundle of fabric for an exorbitant amount at the Victorian Albert Museum gift shop. I was on a day trip to London and I bought it on an impulse, which I vaguely regretted later because it was so expensive. But you know, nothing can be done about that now. So we might as well make something nice out of it. This bundle of large squares is by Moda and it's falling apart because I've had it in this packaging for so long. Um, this is called the May Morris Studio Collection and I thought we should talk a little bit about May Morris. So who was May Morris? She was the daughter of the very famous William Morris of Morris and & Company and his wife Jane. But she was also an artist in her own right, and her work is often overshadowed by her father. Through her parents' involvement in the arts and craft movement and the pre-Raphaelites... Pre-Raphaelites? Pre-Raphaelites? May grew up steeped in art and creativity. William Morris was a prolific artist, working with textiles, tapestries, furniture, to name a few. But it is most likely for his wallpapers that you may recognise the name today. May's mother, Jane, was also involved in the arts and crafts movement by being an accomplished embroiderer and often a model and inspiration for the pre-Raphaelites. May, taught by her mother and aunt, showed an early affinity for embroidery and at the age of 23 took over the embroidery department at Morris & Company. May applied many of the arts and crafts aesthetics to her embroidery designs, including natural motifs, medieval influences and clever directional stitching, elevating what was often considered a domestic affair embroidery, to art. She created many of the repeating patterns that we now associate as iconic to the Morris Company. After her father's death, May left the company but pursued an active and involved career in the arts through writing, teaching and becoming a co-founder of the Women's Guilds of Arts. Her work was fundamental to the company and she was immensely talented. A lot of May's work is held at the V&A today, I'll leave a link down below so you can explore some more of it too. These squares are from the May Morris Studio Collection by a company called Moda and it was sort of exclusively for Moda from the V&A archives um, and it uses designs specifically by May Morris, not William Morris, such as Arcadia, Iris and Honeysuckle in different colourways. So let's make a quilt. So I've been thinking about this quilt ever since I did go to the V&A and then I did my little research into the background of quilting and into sort of what was realistic for me to do as a beginner and I also found it really lovely that um, the packaging itself for the squares I bought includes all this information about how you can cut it for quilting um, which I thought was really cool and obviously indicates I did not have an original thought at all. <laughs> um, as I was digging around, I found this book called Lessons in Fancy Work by Lydia Sandford from 1885 and she has a description of crazy quilting and normal quilting in it as well. Um, I'm not quite sure what kind of level of work she's aiming for here, <laughs> hopefully my level, which is definitely a beginner. But I thought I would read you this passage, which is what I think I'm going to attempt. First way of making a quilt. A description of one recently seen will give a correct idea of the manner of making it. The body of the quilt was composed of nine large squares or blocks of patchwork, each made separately, and then sewed together forming a large square, having three of the smaller squares on each side. Where the squares were joined together, a strip of black velvet ribbon, an inch and a half wide, was sewed on, forming a border round each square. This ribbon was worked with large herringbone stitches in different colour embroidery silk to correspond with the rest of the quilt. I can't begin to, com begin to comprehend how people seam all these triangles together and make them look neat and straight. So instead we're going to do squares because I think I can do that. I do have an important decision to make which is whether I keep them to this size which is already pre-cut pre and this is roughly 10 inches by 10 inches or if I should cut them smaller. That would be so much more work because what I think I'm going to do it to attempt is exactly the example I read out to you about uh, piecing over paper, where I'll get the paper, the fabric will go over the paper, the edges will be turned under and basted down, and then each square is whip stitched together. Um, I just, I think, I really enjoy hand sewing and I think that'll look nice. You can do all of this by machine, probably way faster, but I think that's what I'm going to attempt. Okay, well the other thing we need to discuss is the size. So I've decided to buy a queen size, I don't have a queen size bed, but I like the comfiness of something queen size and a smaller bed. So I've decided to buy this, which is some wadding, some fancy, super expensive wadding, but I thought since I've already invest invested in the fabric, I might as well invest in the wadding. Um, it's a very slippery slope. 
But yeah, this one is Queen, which is 96 inches by 108 inches. Which means if I were to do 9 inch, 9, 10 inch squares, that would be way too small. So I'd have to do more. Wait, what? That would be 10 squares by 9 squares, which is quite big. So I will be using the bigger squares. Yep, that would be crazy if I cut each square into four and then do that. Oh my God, it would take me years. So yeah, we will be using the large the large ones. Okay, so you may notice this is not my desk and this is not the math that I was tried to show you a second ago, but that is because my maths were not messing. And as, as soon as I wrote it down, it just seemed like it wasn't going to work. So what I did was I got all of the squares that come in the pack and I laid them out on my bed because that was the only thing that seemed to make sense. And I don't think I have enough squares to make a queen sized quilt. Um, that's just how it is. I have this many squares, which is six by seven. Um, which I think works out just about a nice sized quilt plus like a border along the edges. I think it'll be fine. So the next step will be to cut the, the, the paper sizes um, and then attempt one and see how it goes. I'm not sure what kind of paper I'm going to use. Hmm. Okay, so I've done a tester, which looks like this. I cut out a piece of, this is just printer paper, which is what I had on hand. Um, but this is, I had to piece it, ironically, so that it would be nine inches by nine inches, which should be the finished size of the square. And then I pinned the fabric over it and then just basted it along the edges with some uh, thin cotton thread, which is in the Victorian instructions. It is unclear to me if this paper remains here. That seems like a poor idea and want to make the quilt really crinkly in sound. I don't know. I'm a bit confused but also because I had to tape it that means there's now sticky tape inside here which I don't like which means I would have to source some kind of paper that is big enough to cut nine inch squares without glue of any sort. And I'm not sure how I would rip this out without tearing it to reuse it like you're meant to in the instructions that I've understood. I've asked for help on Instagram. I'm hoping that someone is a avid quilter that can help me or at least recommend a book that I can get because there's so many books on quilting. I'm just a little bit overwhelmed about what to pick. I think this will look really cute though, right? So apparently English paper piecing is still very popular. Um, and obviously the modern technique has evolved to be a little bit different from the Victorian, mainly because we have different technology now. So a lot of uh, people told me that uh, nowadays it's very common to glue down your seam allowances rather than baste, and that's much faster. Totally see that. I won't be doing that because I don't have any fabric appropriate glue and yeah, it's just, it'll be easier for me to do <laughs> my basting by hand. <laughs> Um, and then the other big question I had was whether you are meant to sew through the paper and then how you remove it, etc, etc. So um, many people confirmed that indeed what you do is you cut out the shape from paper or cardstock if you can, uh, because that'll be easier to maintain your shapes, especially f like shapes that are harder to work with in a plain um, rectangle. And then you baste through the edges so that you catch the paper and the seam allowance down. And then you sew this, the, your shapes together, right sides facing each other with a small whip stitch along the edge, not catching the papers if you can. Um, and then when your quilt is all secure, you can press it down and then remove the basting and remove the, um, the paper quite easily. And then you can reuse those shapes for a different quilt or a different project. So that is exactly what I'm going to be doing. Now lots of people recommended that I use some uh, light cardstock or basically just anything that's a little bit thicker than paper because for a beginner that's just easier to use. However, I don't have any and I really want to get going with this. So I have found an old newspaper, <laughs> which is very Victorian. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna be cutting this into nine inch uh, rectangles, as many as I can, and then I'm gonna get going. So yeah, I'm excited. Let's get going. We have some paper to cut out and some things to baste, which doesn't sound very exciting, but I hope you stick with me. Okay, so all of my little squares are done. I think they look great. Some are straighter than others, but whatever, that's the nature of patchwork, isn't it? I have, I think I have 43 squares. I'm not sure, I'm bad at maths. But anyway, they're all tacked. 
all through the paper. I made sure that the corners were nicely secured. And now the next step is to sew each two like this. However, I first need to decide on how to arrange them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay them down on my bed like I did before into an arrangement that pleases my aesthetic senses. And then I will turn them over and with a Sharpie, I'm going to write a number on them. And then I'm going to write that number on this little grid here so that I know what to sew to what. And hopefully that will keep me from being super confused. So let's go do that. Okay, so I've laid it out on a potential potential pattern here. I don't like certain aspects of it, like the red here or move over there. But basically I really struggled because these might look like different bits, but they're actually just different colorways of the same pattern. And there's a lot of some of them, like this one has so many. So I was trying to spread them out so that they looked a little bit more varied. I'm not convinced. I don't think it looks bad, but I think the color balance is a bit off. What I did do the first time I tried this out is that I did kind of like a gradient. This is kind of what I meant. Um, I think to me personally, this is more pleasing. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double check that they're all the right orientation that I want for them. Uh, some of them are like sideways and some of them are just to try and do some variety because there's so much of that one, which I think is called Arcadia. And yeah. It's been roughly a year since I started this project <laughs> and I think it's time to finish it off. I started it last year, roughly around October, November, and I did all of the cool hand sewing with the paper piecing, all the stuff I love. I love a whip stitch, so that was the highlight of the project for me. And then I kind of lost a bit of steam. I had to sandwich and pin the layers of fabric and batting together, which required moving my dining table. So I just put it off and put it off. <laughs> until it was spring, and then any desire to make a warm quilt evaporated. But I finally managed it. I cleared enough floor space to position my pieced lining, then the wool batting, and then the pieced cotton layer. I pinned this with safety pins at every corner of the squares, and then with pins once I ran out of the safety ones. A big mistake, just make sure you have hundreds of safety pins or it makes the sewing part very painful. Once they were all pinned, I put it off for a few more weeks for good measure <laughs> before I finally bought one of these. This is a quilting guide. 
It's a bar that you can slide into most machine feet and you can tighten a, a screw to position it so that you can line up your previous stitched line with your new one and maintain even spacing. Once that was set up, I drew a random diagonal line across my quilt and got started on sewing. This was fairly frustrating as I don't have a quilting machine, so I had to roll up my quilt really tight and try and maneuver it with all the pins by brute strength. It was a workout. Once the first set was done, I then drew another diagonal line going the opposite direction and a few hours of straight mind numbing machine sewing, I had a quilt. So the quilt is nearly done. We're, I, I can hardly believe it. It's been sat in my sewing room for over a year, rolled up in the corner, but it's nearly done and I'm so excited to get it done. So the last thing I need to do is to bind the edges. There are different ways that you can do this for quilts. Um, the one I just, I saw the binding was quite common and easy to do. You can use bias tape, you can use matching fabric that you have and make tape out of it. I don't have, I thought it would look really cute if I had some more William Morris uh, fabric to do the binding, but unfortunately I don't and I really didn't want to spend a lot of money because I'd need to buy like a meter of it and uh, it's pretty pricey. <laughs> so instead I've dug through my stash and I managed to find some little velvet ribbon. It's not quite black, it's more like a dark, dark brown, but I think it'll still look really nice. And all I've done is I've ironed it in half and now I'm just gonna sandwich the edges of the quilt in here pin it into place, baste it, and I'm just going to top stitch it by, mach by machine because I think it'll look quite discreet in the velvet because it'll sink into the fibres and you know the rest of the quilt is stitched by machine so not an issue but I'm so excited to have it done so let's finish it. And that is it. After so long, I'm so glad I finished it. It's going straight onto my bed for these cold winter nights and I love the beautiful Morris patterns on it. I really love the Morris decorations, but because they're usually so pricey, I don't really have any, but I thought this was a really good way to incorporate them into something I made. I definitely enjoyed the process and I think my next attempt might be one of those crazy Victorian quilts. It looks like so much fun and super practical to use up small scraps of fabric. I also had a thought that I can quilt it and then use it as fabric to make something else. Like you can cut something out of it. What do you think? Let me know down below. Maybe a, a cool coat? Thank you so much for coming along on this first quilting adventure and I'll see you very soon.